Hey there, welcome to another Lemon 64 play guide and review. This time we'll be checking out Fifth Gear, and this was released by Houston on the Racket label in 1988. The title music appears to have been lifted out of a Hong Kong chop suey movie, or you would believe, but if you leave that to run, that's actually a really great piece. And you can see the creators of this game, and none of those creators went on to any of the games according to the 1164 website. See lots of demo effects going on, and those continue onto that high score table. Time and some expense has been spent on this introduction, and this was just a budget game. This came out on the budget racket label from Houston, and in 1988, I think they made this onto the market. But a short time after that, they released this on a cover tape, which is, as far as I know, where I picked it up. fifth gear we drive a car down a road and if this reminds you a little bit of Miami Vice it certainly did me and the control system is pretty similar as well and takes some time to get used to it. Beginning of the game we are given a shop and we are given 10,000 credits for us to buy things and we can buy rapid fire weapons but Let's stick to the machine gun for now, and it's great to see shops in this game. I'm actually playing this with the Infinite Lives cheat on for another Infinite Lives challenge, and part of the challenge of this game is jumping over things and that is pretty difficult at the start because you can't do that for free. Yes, in this game the jumping ability can be bought but it costs money and at this early stage of the game all we have to do is to evade the enemies. You can see the time limit ticking down. We have maybe four minutes to reach the end of that level. Bushes can't be blown up with the shotgun, but they can be blown up with rockets later on, or should I say missiles, and the missiles can be bought again in the shop, as well as the turbo boost. When we respawn, it will respawn us more or less online with the jump that we're supposed to make. And in this game, it's the jumps which are all important. You can see we're taking a bit of damage. It goes from white down to red. And if we collide with something, we'll take a lot of damage in this game. We've well, given five lives at the start, and I've already used them. So let's pile into the extra shop. Let's see what's in here. Watertight chassis that will allow us to move over water. And helium tires as well is a great benefit. But let's check out, well, let's get the boost equipment, the turbo boost equipment, and hopefully that's great. And the helium tires as well. And let's see, we also have protective side armor, but we don't have enough cash. button or simply wandering into the shop I think that auto selects so sometimes you might wander into that twice and we have the turbo boost you can see that's highlighted on the bar we have a machine gun no missiles but we have a turbo boost and that means that we can boost our way towards the end of that level
right now, I would have run out of lives, but it is possible to memorise this first stage and to memorise all the things that you have to do to get to the end in time. You can see we have 1 minute 35 seconds remaining. We can't buy the missiles unless we buy the missile launcher. So let's buy that missile launcher. And well, the missiles are pretty expensive. We've now collected 10 missiles, and that will allow us to blow up 10 things. And so let's try this automatic gun. And that's one of them. And we can also destroy the trees as well. Counting down the time and there is less than a minute to go and we have reached the end of the level which is marked by a brick wall that if you jump into it you'll get killed and you may have seen turn here that's not the first time we're going to see that that means well what does that mean it means we have to turn around at the end of the level and make our way back to the start of the level all over again There's a nice tune as we make our way through that landscape and if you memorise where to jump then you can simply hold down the fire button and keep jumping all the way back just as I'm doing at the moment. That's a really fun thing to do but you may notice that we only have 5, 4, 3 seconds remaining and so we are running out of time. When we run out of time, unfortunately our car will manoeuvre very, very slowly and with this very, very slow car it is possible just about to make our way through that level and that's one of the quirks of this game. We still have the machine gun but we can't use the turbo to jump over things and we have seven missiles remaining. get killed we'll be sent all the way back to the restart point and you may notice the trees that we blew up stay blown up so if you clear your path of trees one way or another hopefully we'll be able to get by them and they'll stay destroyed on the next section if we should die then they'll stay destroyed and when we reach the end of the game we'll have to come back this way anyway thing we really need to watch out for are the enemies and we've managed to get through them and that gives us checkpoints. An incredible sum of zero dollars and points as a time bonus. That means we get to move on to level 2 and we get to keep all the upgrades that we collected from level 1 which is just as well because we're facing a boat and boats in this level have to be jumped over so if you don't have the watertight chassis or the turbo boost you're going to have to have bought them on that first level. So jumping was easy in this game, think again, because it isn't, and you sometimes have to find the perfect place to jump, or the perfect place to start to jump, and hopefully that will get you through the level, and hopefully we don't have to use the turbo every time. You can see a fuel place there, but we are alright for fuel because every time we die, hopefully we'll get some more fuel for free. We can also use those missiles to blow up the walls and also the enemies. And that's a good job because those missiles aren't heat seeking, you'll have to align those up onto the target. In 
this game, the landscape can count against us, and if we roll up a hill, your car will slow down, and if we roll down it, of course it will speed up, and sometimes those mechanics have to be observed. But if you're playing the game the normal way, it's pretty boring, but if you can boost and jump over everything, you saw a delayed jump in there, and that means we died, but if we boost all the way to the end, it's a very fun experience. spend money on fuel, but if you die strategically you certainly don't need to do that. And we're on one life at the moment because we're on the infinite lives challenge. This is level 2, and back in the day I managed to get all the way up to level 3 without dying legitimately, but in this playthrough of course I can't remember the game, so I'm having to do it the hard way. Well, let's hopefully select the turbo boost, or back it up as far as we can do, so the natural horizon Get us through that trouble. Turn here! We've reached the end of the level. This time we only have three minutes remaining, but we can pull it into the garage and we can actually fix our damage should we need to do that, and even buy a new car if we want to sacrifice all of our money. who remembers Smokey and the Bandit will remember the Pontiac Firebird and according to the rumours I heard they had to stop making that production car and it was really slow because of the movie and people kept jumping it over things and over trains and things like that thinking that the car would survive. The car did not survive and they followed that up with another Pontiac Firebird which then appeared as the Kit car and Kit of course jumped over things with a turbo boost and maybe that's where this game gets its turbo boost feature. Of course plenty of people bought the Pontiac Firebird and drove it over things and destroyed them and so they are pretty rare. They are big heavy slow vehicles in real life and as far as I know they had to stop the Pontiac Firebird range completely after that because people were destroying themselves thanks to the TV shows and the movies. But in this particular car it's supposed to be a stunt car and unfortunately it's not providing us with too many stunts and maybe I should have provided myself with the watertight chassis and then I can simply drive straight over these things. But we're trying to drive straight back to the start and earn some money because with a thousand credits that is just not enough for that watertight chassis. So this game is strategic and you need to vote all the right items in all the right order. in the end of level 2 and hopefully we'll get some more bonuses because of our time and trouble. And good luck in the next race, we've been given a couple of grand and that's maybe just enough to find some more upgrades, but of course if you spend that on missiles, or health, or fuel, of course it does not give us enough, and unless you know the perfect path, then you'll be offline, and that means that we won't be able to return back to the start, and that means we won't be able to get enough credits for the next shot. On the zap cover tape I had, unfortunately one of the levels was broken, it could have been one of three, 
or maybe level 4, but one of the levels was broken and it glitched and I couldn't see the graphics. But because of the turbo boost jumping, I managed to jump to the end and back again. And in this one, this is a tape image that I managed to find. And in this game, the graphics are not glitched, at least to the same extent. But they will be glitched a little bit later on. also buy the protective armor and that saves us crashing into things but suddenly we've died anyway you can see our car is more or less on the top half of the screen area and maybe this is NTSC compatible and so it was only square screen in America but either way we can see that being on the top half of the visible area means it's pretty difficult to anticipate things as they materialize on that screen this reason, this game reminds me of the last V8, and in the last V8 we had to get to a checkpoint within the time limit with a monstrously controlling car, and presses few in the way of perks, in fact the last V8 is pretty similar in terms of frustration, and yes it is possible to memorise these routes, and yes we are now getting towards those glitch graphics and sometimes the best routes are across the bridges because that's perhaps where the game anticipates is returning once we've looped the end of this game. Weapons, but it's great to see that scrolling multicolored font as we collect those things and well, let's just spend some money on some missiles and shoot our way through It's pretty annoying, but at least we don't get all the way back to the start and we don't get that because this game has checkpoints and at least the checkpoints in this game means that we can restart from where we died and so this game really doesn't have hidden depth, it's straightforward all the way through it the graphics don't change all the way through it and because we have precious little money because we didn't complete level 1 in the fastest time unfortunately we don't have the upgrades to survive the crashes i.e. the side armor we don't have the upgrades to move through water either
this game has three levels and once you've completed all three then it loops back to the start again and I'm not quite sure but this appears to be the glitchy level which I remember on the cover tape. get to loop all the way back to the start again and I noticed the average score for this game was 5.6 on the Lemon C64 database which is not an amazing score by any stretch. Most people said the graphics were worth perhaps a 6 and the sound, well the music is definitely worth a 7 but playability unfortunately even if you memorise these three levels it's either very risky or a joke and either one of those isn't very fun unfortunately and so I couldn't really find any magazine scores for this but I'm sure everybody reviewed it and again it was on a cover tape which is where I picked it up for free and that's always the best way to pick up these games so as a game I really did spend some time with it back in the day but coming back to this after all these years yes the jumping is mega fun and getting back just in the nick of time it was a great idea and if they'd have put the vehicle at a different angle on the screen it would have been better and if they'd have made this a jeep it would have been better as well <laughs> Congratulations champ, you now have something or other, but I didn't quite read that, I'm sure that said completed the game. But here we are again, this is level 1. And so thanks once again for viewing 1164 Play Guide and Review, and I wish this game that I remember fondly from back in the day was just only slightly much better. Thank you.